Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about the negative binomial distribution. Suppose that independent trials, each having probability P of being a success and are performed until a total of R successes is reached. If we let X be the number of failures that precede the R success, then the random variable X follows a negative binomial distribution. So the negative binomial distribution is to model the number of failures before the alpha success. And how about the number of trials required? The number of trials required equals the random variable x plus the number of success you want. So R is predetermined. And X is a random variable. And therefore, the number of trials required to get R success is also a random variable for negative binomial distribution. Let's take a look at the differences between binomial distribution and the negative binomial distribution. Regarding the number of trials for the binomial distribution, we fixed it in advance. And for the negative binomial, this is a random variable. For the number of successes in the sample, this is a random variable for the binomial distribution. And for the negative binomial distribution, we fix this value in advance. Let's get back to the negative binomial distribution. Suppose the random variable x is the number of failures that precede the alpha success with probability of success p. Consider the probability that x equals to small x. So that is, we want our successes. And in our trial, there are a total of x failures. So we do trial number one, number two, number three, until trial number n. The last trial, trial number n, must be a success. Once we reach the alpha success, we stop performing the experiment. For the first n minus one trials, we should have x failures and r minus one successes. So altogether in this experiment, we have x failures and a total of our successes. What is the probability of getting X failures in N trials? For the first N minus one trials, we have X failures and R minus one successes. So we have the total no number of trials which is n minus one, and we split it into the failures and the successes. So this is x plus r minus one. And out of this n minus one trial, we have r minus one successes. The probability of getting r minus one successes in n minus one trial is p to the power r minus 1 times 1 minus p over raised to the power x. This is the probability for the first n minus 1 trials to get r minus 1 successes. And we need to multiply the probability of success in trial number n, which is p. Simplify the expression p to the power r minus 1 
times p, which is p to the power r. And this is the PMF of the negative binomial distribution. And x takes on value 0, 1, 2, up to infinity. This is the number of failures required to get our success. And the notation for the negative binomial distribution is NB with two parameters, R and P. R stands for the total number of success we want to achieve, and P is the probability of success. So we have the notation, X follows the negative binomial distribution NB with parameters R and P with the PMF. N is X plus R. So we have N minus one. So we have X plus R minus one. And we want R minus one success. So this is the expression X plus R minus one, C R minus one, and then times P to the power R times the factor one minus P to the power X where x take on value 0, 1, 2, up to infinity. How about the mean and the variance? The mean equals r times 1 minus p over p, and the variance equals r times 1 minus p over p squared. Let's take a look at an example. You flip a biased coin whose probability of getting ahead is 0 0.4. You stop flipping the coin until you get the seventh head. What is the probability that you need 10 flips to achieve this goal? So let x be the number of failures that precede the R success. And this is the PMF. And in this example, let X be the number of the tails before the seventh head. So we have R equals seven. We want seven successes in the experiment. P 0.4. The probability of getting a success, in this case, a head is 0 0.4. So X follows a negative binomial distribution with parameter 7 and 0 0.4. We want to get the probability of X equals 3. X is the number of failure, the number of tails we get. Altogether, 10 flips. At the 10th flip, this must be the seventh head. So in the first nine flips, we should get six heads and three tails. So we have x equals three, three failure. Failure corresponds to the event tail. All right, so we get x equals 3, r equals 7, and p equals 0 0.4. Plug into the formula. And we get the corresponding probability, 0 0.0297. Let's take a look at another scenario. You stop flipping the coin until you get the fifth head. What is the probability that you need 15 flips? Similar to the last question. Now we use the Excel function. The Excel function for the negative binomial distribution is net binom dot disk. 
N E G B I N O M dot E I S T. It takes four parameters X, R, P, and cumulative. X corresponds to the number of failures in the experiment, and R is the number of success we want to achieve, and P is the probability of success, and cumulative is the logical value, true or false. In this example, let X be the number of tails before the fifth head. So R equals 5, P is 0 0.4, X follows a negative binomial distribution with parameter 5 and 0 0.4. We want to get the probability that X equals 10. The probability of getting 10 tails before the fifth head occurs. Altogether, 15 flips. Flip number 15 must be a head, and this must be the fifth head. In the first 14 trials, we should get four head and 10 tails. Tails corresponds to failure event. So we have the probability x equals 10. This is the expression, the probability we need to compute. Plug into the Excel function. Negative binomial distribution with parameter 10 for x, and then r equals 5, p equals 0.4. We want the value of the PMF at x equals 10. So the cumulative value here is false, and we get the probability 0 0.062. The next example, same scenario, and now you stop flipping the coin until you get the third head. What is the probability that you need at most eight flips? Use the Excel function. Let X be the number of tails before the third head. So we have R equals three, P equals 0 0.4, and X follows a negative binomial distribution with parameters 3 and 0 0.4. In the best case scenario, we want three heads. So all the flips are heads, then this is the best case scenario. Flip number three is the third head, and then for the first two flips, we get two heads and zero tail. In this case, the number of failure is zero. And in the worst case, we need eight flips. This is the question asked. We want to find the probability that we need at most eight flips. So we get the third head in flip number eight. For the first seven flips, we should get two heads and five tails. The number of failures is five. So to get the probability of at most eight flips, we want to get the probability that the number of failures is less than or equals five. We want the cumulative probability at x equals five. 
So we use the negative binomial distribution for the XL function here, X equals five, R equals three, P is 0 0.4, and the cumulative value is true. Then we get the probability 0 0.6846. Let's get back to the PMF of the negative binomial distribution. So far, we let the random variable x to be the number of failures that visit the R success. Now, let the random variable n be the number of trials to obtain R successes. We are going to get and other expression for the negative binomial distribution. Consider the probability that we need n trials. So we still have the same case that trial number n must be a success, the R success, and for the first n minus one trial, we must have r minus one successes. So the probability of n equals to small n is n minus one c r minus one. This is the number of ways of getting r minus one successes in the first n minus one trials with probability p to the power r minus one times one minus p to the power m minus one minus r minus one. And then times the probability of success in trial number n, which is p. Simplify the expression. and the possible value for n start from r. We must have r success. So this is the minimum value of n. n start from r, r plus one, r plus two to infinity. Let's sum up the two expressions. Here we have the random variable x, the number of failures, and n, the number of trials. The number of trials n equals the number of failures plus r. r is the number of success. For the random variable x, we have this PMF. And then for the random variable n, this is the corresponding PMF. And you can verify that these two PMF are equivalent by making the substitution of n equals x plus r. The mean for x is r times one minus p over p. And the mean for n is r over p. Make use of the identity. The expected value of n, where n equals x plus r. So the expected value of n equals the expected value of x plus r. R is a constant. So this equals the expected value of x plus r. The expected value of x can be rewritten as r over p minus r. And then plus r, we get the expected value of n, which is r over p. And then for the variance, Variance of x is r times one minus p over p squared. 
and then the same expression for the variance of n. The derivation, we have the variance of n equals the variance of x plus r. And this equals the variance of x. This is the prop property of the variance formula of adding a constant to a random variable. The variance are the same. So we have the variance of x plus r equals the variance of x. So we have the variance of n equals the variance of x. So this is the summary of the negative binomial distribution. We can express the PMF in terms of the number of failures or the number of trials. We have two expressions for that. And then for the next video, we will focus on the PMF of n. And then from that, we will talk about the geometric distribution. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.